welcome back. Today let's make an effort to try to build the Quackle uh, game analysis utility. So you see that there are distributions of this available for Windows, OS X, and uh, Unix users. However, um, in a better effort to try to understand what makes this thing tick, uh, let's have a go at compiling the source code, uh, which we downloaded from this URL on GitHub. So, step one with many projects is read the documentation. So, let's see. This builds on Qt versions 5.12 through 5.15. I'm not sure if that's what I've got installed or not. We're going to find out in a minute. Actually, I don't know how to check. Um, so, I did verify. I have version 5 something of this QT. Oh, 5.15. That's what I've got installed. It's one of these things. I don't know which one. I installed this like this year or last year or something. But somehow through my Ubuntu distro... Um, I was able to get QT5, and that's what counts. So, yeah, README here suggests that we QMake Quackle.pro and make, and then see all this stuff. So, I guess we could try to do that. Um, let's see. I usually make a build.sh file uh, just to help me keep track of what it is that I'm doing. Uh, bash. I can't even spell bash right now. There we go. There we go. And then let's try it. Hey, QMake. No such file or directory. So I thought I had this installed. Um... Okay, then Q make. Okay. User lib qt5 bin q make. Well, it's not in user lib anymore. Uh, just out of curiosity, what is this thing? And is it the same or different from this thing? Alright, so, oh, QMake is a symbolic link for QT Chooser, uh, which is attempting to resolve to this thing, but instead is resolving to this thing instead. Uh... <laughs> Alright, so the magic of Linux is that these build errors sometimes can be easily resolved by just the most trivial Google search. Uh, sometimes. Sometimes not. So, yeah. I might actually have to figure out what the directions are that I need to follow before following the directions. Oh yeah, so there's some installer guide provided by QT build provider that tells us how to install uh, QMake version or QT5. Yeah, this sort of thing. Um, okay. Why I have so many things installed and yet this doesn't work? I don't know. Um, at let's see do we have this one installed qt5 default nope apt install this thing let's try that see what we end up with it has no installation candidate which means the instructions i'm trying to follow are outdated um cool So, yeah, I don't know. When all else fails, read the directions. 
How do... Yeah. Thank you. What are the directions? Are there directions? Oh, we've been... Okay. Wait. I thought there was something where it, like, holds your hand a little bit more. Um... Ubuntu package. Wait. Qt 5.x will be installed. Oh, this is for Ubuntu 12.10. Alright, thanks. Uh, but I don't want that version of Ubuntu. Um, yeah. Somebody have a better updated guide? That's not encouraging. When was this posted? 2018. Okay, do I need this QT creator thing? I, 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 so, I'm not sure what QT creator is. Oh, it's the IDE, which I don't really need. So I'm doing this from a command line. Um, But yeah, the QT5 default package apparently is not defined in Ubuntu 20, or maybe it is. I guess either way, that's the sort of thing I need to be searching for. Bionic, is that the latest distro? I seem to remember the version 20 had a different name. Yeah, this is 1804. Bionic, Bionic updates, Focal and Groovy. Is Groovy 20? Groovy is 20. Alright. So yeah, this is defined within Universe. I should be able to find it. Um. Hmm. <laughs> I mean, I shouldn't have to download it this way. Apt itself should be able to negotiate this for me. So what's the deal? Package QT5 default has no installation candidate. Oh wait, what? Excuse me. That don't make sense. Uh, Okay, well, 21's not even what I'm looking at, but fine. But I'm looking at version... Well, I think I'm not on 21. Oh, I am on 21. Stupid me. Um, was removed in the Q... Okay, in Debian's version, this. Your suit auto-synced during the development cycle. There's no way to return this without manually recompiling the package and other things was removed, since default is no more. The justification for the removal is nowadays it's not required, as 5 is the only version. Alright. So it just means that all the instructions out there are out to date. Um... Yeah, so package could be packages can be installed without this dependency with foresaw, etc. Um, yeah, no, that's fine. So yeah, we can install all the dependencies of the package with this stuff, which I think I have done already. Oh my goodness. I don't know what QT base is. What is QT base? Well, I guess we need to figure that out. I don't want to just install random stuff and not understand what I'm doing. Uh, I mean, yeah, that's the correct reference there. There's our Quackle web page. Yeah, we don't need QT5 default. Well, that's... Okay, whatever. 
What is QT base? All right, well, this is the most friendly thing we're going to get, explaining what QT base, well, 5 dev. Um, I can edit this URL here to drop the dash dev part. No, I can't. Just kidding. All right. So what can we consider next? What the hell is QT base? I don't know. It's something. I mean, maybe I've already installed it. Maybe this doesn't matter. Um, apt list installed grep qt. So we got qt chooser, qt translations, uh, a whole bunch of other stuff, but none of this stuff. So, okay. Yeah, I guess we're going to try it. Um, I have no idea at all. That's cool. Sure, why not? Hello. That's a clever name. Nicely done. Let me just double check that the live stream shows the chat, and it does. Um, all right. Nothing. No candidates for removal. And then let's quackle. The producers of the movie The Last Airbender are now in talks with Chuck Norris in order to star him in their next sequel, The Last Skullbender. Ah, uh, fortune cookie. You never let us down. Except when you do. Um, Alright, so I created the build data set. Oh. Okay. I don't understand how... Uh, apparently I've got, like, multiple QT5s installed on my machine at this point. And at least one of them resolves, and that's all we needed. It was just one. Um, so... What is this? AR is this... Static... Op, um, libquackle.a being a static shared object file. Then all these object files um, probably produced something here somehow. Uh, there's a license header. Uh, I don't actually know anything. Well, I'm sorry. So I did step one of the directions, which was make. Um, so use qmake to build quackle.pro. And Quackleio, Quackleio Pro. Okay. And then thereafter, build the main binary. Okay, so that's step one. You can now try building all the objects for Quackle, and then all the objects for Quackleio and see if this compiles. Uh, oh, AR is for archive stuff. Okay. Cool, I guess. Let me demonstrate my most profound ignorance. All right, so... Wait, it's kind of interesting. So we called our build.sh that executed both of those sets of commands. At least it should have. I don't know that it actually did, because I didn't see any output here beyond the output that we observed the first... Oh, those libquackleio.a. Never mind. 
It looked very similar to the output we had from last time, but it's different. Um, all right, so I'm guessing that was successful. And finally build the main binary. Sure. What if it's non-binary? Can we build executables that are non-binary? Yeah, anyway. My attempt at humor. So, I'm guessing this is taking all the object files that were compiled earlier and attempting to build uh, the main program. And I guess we just have to wait. But yeah, we got... Um, we found the source code for this that was readily available through GitHub. And so through GitHub, you click on this, and then you click on the copy thing. And then you can git clone this URL from any command line. Just type git clone in that URL. And then as the readme says, make sure that you have the dependencies that are required. And then you can build the stuff. And there's some explanation of what's where. And I'm just seeing, can I build it? Not because I have any grand intents to change it. Um, but, yeah, if it's buildable, then we can change it if we need to or want to. Uh, so, lslrt usually showed at the end of the listing the most recently modified file. Uh, I don't know that Quacker is the most recently modified. Oh, there it is, Quacker Quackle. Uh, lslrt Quacker. There it is, Quackle. Now that has a GUI aspect to it. And this is a headless uh, terminal. So, I mean, I think I still have... I forget if I've installed Ubuntu Desktop or Ubuntu Server Edition. So I don't know if there is some terminal... Oh, if there's some X11 display somewhere. Um, if there is, I still don't have a great way to display it right here. But... We've tackled the largest question of, well, can I build this at all? Yes. So the next step, if we really, really wanted to change something, presumably it'd be because I'm using a tool that I had built instead of one I had downloaded. And to that end, I think there was a readme for Windows. And it's probably a nightmare. Oh. Wow. Um, it's not a markdown file, so it doesn't render beautifully. But yeah, you want to have all these dependencies installed, and all these dependencies installed, and then this dependency installed. Also, you want to have all this other stuff configured. And you want to do all this stuff and that stuff and this stuff and that stuff if you want to do it on Windows. Um, but yeah, my point is that if I were motivated to change this, uh, yeah, I'd have to actually read the directions. Uh, I'm not really super motivated to change it, but I was curious, if push came to shove, if I had to build this thing, could I build it? Actually, yes, surprisingly. Um, so yeah. Yeah, Windows, uh, yeah. Because there's not this great diversity of platforms, um, so it's like you're, uh, if you're building a game or building a commercial application or various things, your choices are uh, Windows, OS X, mobile, and then like browser stuff, and then maybe Linux. Um, so there's not a whole lot of options. So, yeah, if there were more options, 
I don't know that developers would all jump to the latest thing. Like, several game consoles have come out with great excitement um, and great promise. So there's been, like, Ouya, there's been Google Stadia. I don't even know that Stadia is a console per se, but still. Like, just when something emerges, there's really not incentive for everybody to jump on the new thing without carefully understanding it. So, yeah, there's just not the great diversity of platforms to build on at present, and it's getting harder and harder to develop um, full applications. And Windows is not simplifying that problem. Um, in fact, in one respect, kind of the opposite. I've built a Python bot. Um, I guess we can digress into this briefly. So, I forget. Did I feature that here? Yeah. Um, I'm collaborating with Danny Barker in building this Python bot for looking up definitions of words. And I added a CI pipeline for this so that every time something gets checked in, a build is executed and an artifact is output. And this is a zip file built by Microsoft using exclusively Microsoft-based tools. And then if you download this Microsoft Windows Defender, will claim that it's a virus, even though this originated from GitHub and was built entirely on a Microsoft stack. Like, I don't know what to do about that. Um, I've been trying to build this thing. I'm completely stuck. So yeah, building f for Windows requires some knowledge. Um, I don't know how good or bad it is, I just know it's not easy. But hey, yeah, so uh, if I wanted to build this for Linux, there we go. Got it built in under a half hour. So go me. Oh, I debated putting a little timer up in the corner while uh, trying to do this. I thought that would have been funny, but it probably would have been distracting too. So I guess maybe in future uh, frenetic coding expeditions, maybe we do some of that. But yeah, um... I think now that we are able to compile this, if we so desired, uh, we could try... Yeah, I don't know, like, there's VS Code, there's a Microsoft solution, there's Sublime. I think Sublime Text is another editor. So there's, like, various IDEs you could try building this stuff under if you wanted to go that route. I don't really know. But... Since we're able to compile this from source, that means that there is some hope that if there were a bug, or if we were curious how something worked, like say we don't know how we were considering writing our own endgame player, we could take a look at this, randomly change some code, see how the resulting executable responds. Um, for that, I'd probably, rather than try to build on Windows, I'd probably try to find a way to get um, things to display off my existing Ubuntu box. But either way, yeah, we could make random changes here, observe what effect the random changes have, if any. And yeah, um, if necessary, reverse stuff, reverse engineer stuff that's not documented. Um, Yes, yeah, so there's our readmes here, too. Uh, yeah, I think you raised the point that apparently you're thinking this is not actively maintained, per se. So, yeah, you could get the... Oh, okay, yeah, this did link to that. It took long... It took more than a quarter of a second for this page to load, so I was concerned that I clicked a link for a download rather than a page for just showing the main index here. So... Yeah, to judge the health of the project, there would be three ways I could look at this. One would be, like, are there active pull requests that are going ignored? And then you could judge, well, should these pull requests be ignored? Maybe. 
not all pull requests are of high quality. Two, are there bugs or just feature requests? And if there are bugs or feature requests, like how pressing are they? So there's 66 bugs or feature requests. And three, is this actively being worked on? So, um, last commit was December 2020. And previous commit was November 2020, then July 2020. So, yeah, that would seem to suggest that they're not doing this on a daily or weekly basis. Since there's not been a commit in over nine months. Um, that's okay. It just, like you said, it's not actively being developed. But if there were a critical bug, would they respond to it? Well, to get some idea of that, you just look at the issues. See if there are bugs open. See what's the last time a critical bug got fixed. Um... I guess another thing I don't care so much about, because, like, I don't really, uh, for fun, I don't do builds on Windows. Um, but you could see if there have been Windows releases. Um, so there's code that's going, uh, that's being checked in, like, last December or last November, and so forth, all, despite those check-ins. The most recent release of this application was actually in 2019. So whatever development is happening here might not be affecting this. Um, oh, I actually do appreciate this. Dump Travis CI. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, because Travis is eventually going to go to a commercial model that like doesn't support free software uh, projects or might rate limit them or something. So having that dependency seems unnecessary. So it's good that they move to something that seems slightly more available, more integrated with this code base. Um, yeah, so hey, we successfully compiled it, um, if only on Linux. And this went much faster than I expected. Usually when I try these like frenetic coding experiments, I get stuck. And this time, actually, the directions in this readme were quite good. And I didn't even have to read the entire readme. I'm like, hey, run this command, run this command, run this command. Does it work? Yes. Good. Done. Um, do I understand everything? Not really. Do I care to? Not really either. So, I mean, we were able to figure things out easily enough to see where the Quackle executable got produced in the Quacker directory. And that was that. If there were a specific thing that I need to fix, like, say, I wanted to introduce a way of being able to process. Um, kanji characters or something that Gadag doesn't currently support. Yeah, then I'd why maybe want to look closer at make Gadag. Um, if I had some revolutionary thought about quantum computing and how we can like somehow process multiple spaces of um, possible simulations at once, maybe I'd want to look at this. Um, any dog thing and see if I could implement my crazy quantum nonsense here. I don't know. But yeah, I don't need to understand the full contents of the readme, but there is a readme. It's well organized and the steps actually work. Provided that you can get the dependencies, which tripped me up a little bit at the beginning, but we got past it, so hooray. Um, yeah, I'm still a bit in shock that I got this, I completed this so quickly, um, but yeah, just to complete the loop, so I was saying that Quackle, yeah, requires a GUI, so I would need to figure that out. Wait, off screen? Well, no, these are all GUIs, though. There's no text-based equivalent here, as far as I know. But, yeah, if you know better, um, feel free to let us know. Uh, we enjoyed this. Uh, I know 
I did, because this is actually successful, to my surprise. So, hooray. Yep, either way, hope you enjoyed, and thanks for watching it.